as your application grows, you're going to want to start separating out some of the JavaScript from your main bundle, because that is just going to grow and grow and grow. And you'll get to a point where there are a lot of components inside the main JavaScript file, which you're sending over the network that aren't actually in most of the pages. So I've started out this project with um, a basic Next.js site. I separated some the source code into uh, some common modules and some feature modules here. If we look at the, the main page, I'm pulling in a title and a message from module A. Now the title is this title here in the browser and the message is this message here. And if we actually look at the implementation of module A, it is a basic uh, in export from the file. When this is loaded in the browser, it makes no difference. This code gets bundled into the, um, the Next.js code, which is served to every single page. But what we really want to do is to start separating this out. So in the dynamic page that I've, I've prepared uh, uses the title and message from module B. And let's look at the difference with that. So in module B, we're pulling in dynamic from next dynamic. And the structure of this is that we define a variable. This is the component. We then um, give dynamic a function which uses the uh, promise-based import. The main thing to, to be aware of is that this component does need to be the default export of the, uh, the component file itself. So let's look at the result when we actually navigate to the dynamic page. You can see here that this dynamic page file has been downloaded and then the each component is separated into its own chunk. So we've got two new chunks here, um, each of them with quite small um, size. Now this is all good, uh, but as your application is probably already quite large, you will find that there's a lot of these chunks and it starts to get confusing as to which one is which code. And what you can actually do is go one step further and like what I've done in my module C, is you can start actually naming the chunks that are coming out. So if you have got like a, um, a set of feature modules, then you might want to name everything the same inside that uh, root index file. So here we've got title C and message C um, in the same format. If we then convert the uh, dynamic page to use those, so let's let's get rid of this. We'll convert to use title C and message C. We've now, instead of downloading one and two, let's just go back. So we start with a clean slate. We navigate to dynamic. And instead of downloading one and two chunk, we've now got a single chunk called module C. And that is controlled by this uh, special comment here, we're pack chunk name. So that's really useful. So the final thing that would be useful also is on a slow connection, if we then load, I mean, let's just use fast 3G here. When we load that dynamic page, you can see that there is a point in time when it flickers off and on. And that is a point where the page is loaded, but any external JavaScript is still waiting. So that actual component hasn't loaded its JavaScript yet. And so Next Dynamic also allows you to provide a loading component. So let's move the browser back to the main home page. And while that's loading, we will actually define our loading component. And we should see, once this is all loaded, that when we navigate to the dynamic page, there is a loading title 
while it's getting ready for uh, the module C title. Let's slow this down to a slow 3G. I'll save the page and we'll navigate to dynamic. So it's just loading the dynamic.js file first. Then it's got the loading title and then it pulls in the component. So I hope this has been useful and um, it's worth uh, making use of.